Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled Scientific Consensus and Mass Delusion. In 1840, Charles Mackey wrote this fantastic book titled Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds. In the book, he said, Man, it has been well said, think in herds. It will be seen that they go mad in herds while they only recover their senses slowly and one by one. In this video, I'm going to discuss one of the most embarrassing episodes in science history. It began in 1879 and still continues today. All it takes is for one bad observation or theory to start snowballing, and pretty soon the entire scientific community is consumed by it. In 1879, Italian astronomer Schiaparelli thought he saw canals on Mars. He drew these pictures and published them. Anyone who's ever looked at Mars through a telescope based on Earth knows that Earth's atmosphere obfuscates any detail. You spend too much time looking through a telescope and you're going to hallucinate all kinds of things. Schiaparelli's 1879 observations caught the popular fancy and from there, things spiraled out of control in the scientific community. By the year 1901, Nikola Tesla, the man who Tesla cars is named after, was sure that he was talking to Martians. This newspaper article is dated January 20th, 1901. A few days ago, a startling announcement was made to the effect that Professor Douglas of the Flagstaff Observatory in Arizona had received a message from Mars. Scientists spent a few years talking to their imaginary Martian friends, and by 1907, the New York Times had determined that Martians were superior to human beings. By 1909, scientists were embroiled in a huge debate over why the Martians built their canals. The New York Times reported that some scientists believed the purpose of the canals was to signal to the Earth while well, others believed they were there to alleviate the effects of global warming, which were causing melting of the ice caps on Mars. It isn't clear why the scientists didn't just ask their Martian friends who they believed they were communicating with. By 1911, the New York Times was overwhelmed by the quality of Martian engineering. Martians built two immense canals in two years. Vast engineering works accomplished in an incredibly short time by our planetary neighbors. By 1921, the scientific community was convinced that Martians were very intelligent, that they were fighting a battle against extinction from Martian global warming. By 1919, there was 100% consensus. The fact that the Martian canals exist is no longer doubted, even by the most religious astronomer. No one doubts today that these canals are parts of an enormous irrigation system, which supplies water to the desert inlands. By 1920, the consensus agreed that Martians were a super race who were signaling to us. Professor Lowell held that Martians were far advanced in inventions and science. Let's just back up for a minute and remember that this all started with some very poor drawings done by Schiaparelli in 1879. And by 1920, the scientific consensus had gone completely insane. The fake news New York Times reported by 1927 that the last Martian skeptics were giving in. Prince and professor who once disbelieved asserts new facts convince him. Oxygen indicates plants. By 1928, the scientific consensus had adopted the view that Martians built their canals to signal Earth. This was universally agreed upon. By 1940, scientists had discovered a new dark green oasis and a new canal, and they had 8,000 photographs to prove it. Who could dispute 8,000 photographs? The New York Times reported on the consensus in 1950 in their science section. Most astronomers now concede that dark color that comes and goes seasonally on Mars is evidence of some low form of vegetation. Fast forward to 1965 into the space age. Astronomers were still seeing canals and oases in photographs taken by spacecraft which had flown by Mars. In 1965, our top scientists did some very detailed analysis of the Martian canal network and proved that they couldn't have been natural. They had to be Martian-made. 
The Martian fingerprint was seen in these canals. And the nonsense continues indefinitely. In 1996, NASA was still insisting that they had found life on Mars. And two years later, in 1998, even though their story had been completely debunked, NASA was still sticking to their life on Mars claim. Fast forward to the present, and Elon Musk wants billions more dollars from the government to establish imaginary human habitats on Mars. Fitting that Elon Musk, the Tesla guy, would be doing this 116 years after Nikola Tesla was talking to Martians. Last year, the New York Post summed up this 150 years of scientific consensus and sanity very succinctly. Martians could have been wiped out by global warming. Now, this is where everything ties together. In 1901, when Nikola Tesla was busy talking with Martians, another scientist was doing some actual climate research. Newt Angstrom experimentally determined in 1901 that adding more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere has very little effect on the Earth's radiative balance. Angstrom determined that the Earth's atmosphere absorbs about 16% of the Earth's radiation and that this absorption varies very little with changes in the proportion of carbon dioxide gas in the air. The scientists have known from experiments since 1901 that the theory of man-made global warming is bunk. Angstrom's 1901 experiment showed that man-made global warming theory is every bit as bunk as Tesla talking to Martians in 1901. But just like the fake life on Mars theory, the fake man-made global warming theory is still going strong in the year 2017. The scientific community went insane over Martians and man-made global warming theory at about the same time. Abba Eben said, a consensus means that everyone agrees to say collectively what no one believes individually. And one more Michael Crichton quote, he said, the claim of consensus is the first refuge of scoundrels. It's a way to avoid debate. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.